Well, welcome to the Anglesey Show on a glorious summer's day. Prize heifers are being judged in the field to our right. Youngsters are wearing jodhpurs and tweeds to our left as they take part and compete in Jim Carner. They're right taking small jumps there on their ponies and horses and the animals flanks are absolutely gleaming as if they've been polished to a high shine uh, in this sun and we're here soaking all of this up uh, on Wales Cast this week with the Conservative MP for Anglesey, Virginia Crosby. Welcome to Wales Cast. Croiso, thank you very much and thank you for meeting here at the Anglesey Show. Oh, it's well, an absolute pleasure. Yes, isn't it's it? great to be invited. Thank you. Explain to us why you chose the Anglesey Show as the site for the interview. Well, the Anglesey Show is the most popular event here on Anglesey. It hasn't run for the last couple of years, so this is the, the, the first year, a real sort of comeback. And it's really, really important to the island. Uh, more than 25,000 people come a day. It's run over two days. And it really epitomises what is important to Anglesey. The island is known as Mon Mam Cymru, the mother of Wales. And that's because of the farmers and the farming community and I, I gave my maiden speech actually during the agricultural bill I had an awful lot of uh, support from the farmers and I'm really trying to do my bit to support them which is why I thought getting the BBC to come here and film me I thought that's great for the show uh, great for uh, really advertising it and also I actually thought you'd have a really nice time well we're, we're having right a about lovely that. time aren't we <laughs> absolutely first time for me in the show is it you and me too yeah fantastic, fantastic. Actually, the first time for you as well, because obviously Anisborn and Anglesey is relatively new to you. <laughs> Absolutely. And when, when I was elected back in, uh, when the island elected me back in December tw 2019, we sort of went straight back into to COVID. So I'm really trying to embrace all that is fantastic about this show. Um, I actually sponsored one of the events, which was the, the Holstein uh, maiden, uh, maiden class. And for me, it was lovely seeing uh, three generations of Anglesey farmers. Uh, we had Nedu, who was uh, one of the, uh, the people actually helping me. Uh, we had the judge there, Simon, and uh, you're seeing these young children take these heifers round the ring and, uh, and speaking to their parents who are incredibly proud. Uh, it's great for me to be part of it and I'm really looking forward to spending uh, the next, next couple of days here. Well, let's go back to 2019 and when you were selected very much at the last minute to be the candidate here on Anis Morn. You, yeah, then... so you were selected the day nominations closed, weren't you? That's right. And uh, what it was is the, the chief whip, uh, Mark Spencer, gave me a call and he said, Virginia, uh, we'd like you to stand on Anis Morn. And do you know what? I thought for about one nanosecond <laughs> uh, because Anis Morn is, is Wales. It's Welsh. Um, I, uh, my grandfather is from Wales. My father went to school in Monmouth and uh, it was very very important for me to represent uh, Wales. I've got connections here. I studied um, a lot of microbiology and I did a lot of my courses. Um, Bangor University is very well known for its uh, marine biology. My children learned to sail here um, in the Menai Straits. And of course, my father actually uh, worked at, uh, at Wilver and I believed it was, it was winnable. It takes a lot of courage to stand as a Conservative Member of Parliament, but the island had the courage to elect me. But you didn't know many people here when you were selected, did you? Because you were asked, I think, to, to gather a group of people together, but that was proving a bit tricky. That's right, yes. Um, so, so when I arrived, um, as you said, literally I only had uh, three, three and a half weeks. And the island uh, it hadn't had a Conservative for 32 years. It hadn't uh, had a woman as a Member of Parliament for 70 years. There is not one, uh, not one Conservative uh, councillor. Um, you know, two thirds of the island speak Welsh. I'm really trying to learn Welsh, but I, I didn't speak uh, Welsh at the time. And it's a, um, it was a draw seat. So it was some, just under 51% uh, leave uh, versus 49% uh, remain. So I didn't even get that, uh, that, that Brexit bounce that, that other constituents uh, had. But a lot of people came out of the woodwork to help me. Um, they might never have voted Conservative before in their life, but I had uh, a, a lot of people of all uh, political parties getting in touch with me, um, helping me. And uh, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. And when I was actually at the Count in, in Clangevny, I could see the, the, the votes coming in. And um, it's an amazing sight to see Virginia Crosby with a big cross in that box and um, I, um, I sent a, a blue heart to the chief whip because I thought you know what this is feeling quite good this is feeling quite positive um, and I was incredibly proud to stand on that podium um, and, and you know thank thank the, the community across Anglesey for putting their their trust in me and it's a it's a real privilege to be an MP and it's a real privilege to be uh, the MP for Anglesey it, it really is absolutely fantastic but 
you have had a rough ride in certain areas, haven't you? Social media, something that, you know, a lot of politicians struggle with, particularly female politicians. You've come off Twitter, I think, recently as, as a result of it. I mean... Tell us a bit about that experience. I think what we're seeing with social media, it's not only politicians and it's not only women and it's politicians of, of every political party, but also um, you've got a lot of sort of um, in the sports sector. You know, what we're seeing is, is a lot of abuse and it's completely unacceptable. And for me, uh, what I find, it's my team. My team are right at the front line having to deal with this abuse on a, on a regular basis. And I think what we need to do is call it out. Um, in the local election, well, I, did a, I wasn't even standing in the local elections, but I was getting so much abuse uh, in the local elections and I you know I did a campaign to actually let's have clean you know compassionate campaigning and I think it's really important for democracy that we do have discourse we of course we're going to disagree about uh, different things but uh, at Christmas just before Christmas I received a, a death threat you know and it was a letter through my office which saying uh, you know traitor uh, traitor hang and it was a picture of a, a, a noose and that sort of um, that sort of abuse is completely uh, we need to all work to call it out because it's impacting our democracy. A lot of uh, people, especially women, say to me, Virginia, why on earth do you do this job? Uh, And I always reply, you know, if I didn't do it, who would? And I'm really, really proud to stand and represent this community, both here on the island and in Westminster. But we do need to uh, to be worried about the abuse because of the impact on our democracy. We need people to come into politics uh, from all walks of life. We need to have uh, you know, trustees of schools. Uh, we need to have school governors. And we want uh, people from the community. And what this abuse does, it puts people off and it, uh, it, it impacts all of us. There's a very interesting example, I think, that you're involved in as well about sort of difference between people meeting in real life and and you know how people converse on on social media where someone who you know wasn't your biggest fan on social media was actually saved by you uh, and your husband I believe during Storm Dennis and obviously got to see a completely different side to you. (laughs) That's a great yeah I it's quite interesting one of my most vociferous trolls uh, it was Storm Dennis and the, it was 70, 80 mile an hour winds and it was absolutely horrendous uh, conditions. And we saw this lady literally trying to walk from the train station in, in Ross Niger. So we stopped. I could hardly open the car door uh, to give her a lift. And um, she sat in the car and we dropped her, we dropped her home. And uh, in, the, in the back of the car, she said, uh, are, you the, uh, are you the Conservative MP for Honest Morn? And I said, yes, I am. And she said, I'm your biggest I'm troll. <laughs> so, of course, um, late that night, um, my husband said it, uh, she was on Twitter just saying what, what this had, what, what had happened, and uh, it, it's quite interesting for me. Um, my, you know, one of my biggest trolls has actually resulted in me having a reputation for the Good Samaritan, and actually, it, it's something that anybody would have done. They would, they would have picked her up. And, and she said, you know, she went public, didn't she, and said that you'd, uh, you'd done that that nice thing for her, and it had made her perhaps reconsider some of the things uh, that she'd been saying about you. But of course, you can't do that for every person who makes a judgment and you have been criticized for not not having roots on Anglesey also for not being a Welsh speaker but you've tried very very hard to learn the language since you became the MP haven't you? I have tried hard, uh, hard to learn Welsh and uh, it's anything that's important to the island is actually important to me. Uh, Two thirds of the island uh, speak Welsh and I made that commitment and that promise to to learn Welsh uh, when I was elected. I'm sure we're going to hear a little bit of Welsh from the uh, from the announcers in the uh, <laughs> in the right. show ring here, which uh, you're hearing in the background. Um, so how's it going? Shumai, Kinsharad, Kabrag, and that? Are you getting getting to grips with it? I am. I am. I'm, I I try and speak Welsh at every opportunity. Um, I did a big big speech actually um, at the Welsh Conservative Conference. I spoke there in Welsh. Um, I did a big speech for fundraising for the uh, for the RNLI uh, at the weekend. I do a radio show on a Friday night, and I always start in in Welsh. Um, Noswaithar. Um, and I always end in, um, you know, Tano Trenesta until next time. So I'm trying my best. I did a um, fantastic residential course at Nanka Fern, where it's very famous for it, its goats, and I have regular lessons uh, with Bangor University. But I must admit, it's a real challenge. It's a challenge for anybody to learn a, a new language. Um, I'm learning about becoming an MP, but the people here on the island, they've really um, embraced the fact that I'm, uh, that I'm trying to learn Welsh. And, and walking around here, um, you know, I'll say, you know, uh, how are are you to, to various people? Um, I'm always saying it, Aelod Senathol, Armas Mondwi. I'm the Member of Parliament for the, the best constituency in the UK. And how much do you know about sort of Welsh language culture before you moved here, given that you know your roots are from 
sort of the South Wales valleys, which are, are, are more sort of Anglophone, less strongly sort of Welsh speaking. You know, was it a surprise to you to see that sort of different cultural aspect? Well, in terms of um, my grandfather was a miner um, in Wales, and my father went to school in Monmouth. So uh, there, you know, there's been a uh, Welsh. Uh, Wales has really featured uh, in uh, in in our family. There's a lot of photos of me uh, dressed as a dragon or dressed as a daffodil. <laughs> <laughs> and really, I think the Welsh word for it is um, is hirolith. Um, there's no real direct translation, but it's that sort of sense of that sense of belonging, and you feel it here very uh, viscerally. And I think it relates to the communities here. The communities are very very strong. Uh, the Welsh language is, is very, very important to them. And I've, I've taken that on board. Everything I do um, here on the island and in Westminster is to try and um, create jobs and investment here. And why is that important? That's important because I, we can get young people to stay here on the island. They stay in their community. And it's important for the Welsh language. And if you don't have jobs, you have no Welsh language. So those two things do go together. Well, poor Bluck with the, with the Welsh lessons. Um, should we sort of talk about you know, your election to this seat, very, very strange election, essentially, it wasn't the 2019 election, very much a Brexit election, you know, a lot of support for Boris Johnson. Did, did you feel that there were certain ingredients that got you over the top there, particularly Boris Johnson? This is a very um, unusual seat. It's a three-way marginal, and I think I got over the line for um, for three reasons, I mean Boris, um, absolutely, um, he was a, a, a huge factor. People here are very, very loyal um, to the sitting MP, uh, but I think Albert Owen standing down after, uh, after 19 years uh, was an opportunity there. Uh, it's a, it's a, a draw seat, so it, you didn't get that Brexit bounce, but you've got Holyhead, which is the second busiest uh, roll-on, roll-off port in the UK. So they were, the, the people here were very, um, you know, exposed to, exposed to Brexit. So I think all, all of those, all of those three reasons uh, really helped me get over the line. I, I think it was a 9.8 percent swing. It was one of the biggest uh, swings of the the general election. Given the sort of the the Boris bounce that we saw, particularly across North Wales in the, in the 2019 election and what's happened since, as we're talking now, obviously the Conservative leadership contest continues apace. You resigned as a PPS in the Wales office uh, when you felt that Boris Johnson's leadership was untenable. Give us a bit of insight into the judgment that you made there. You know, at what point did you think this can't go on and, and why mm. did you feel that way? Whenever people ask me what makes a good MP, I always, the first thing I always say is judgment. Judgment is incredibly important. Now, uh, seven out of nine seats in North Wales are, are blue. Uh, and I think the reality is North Wales feels much more connected to Westminster than they do Cardiff. And I'm a very loyal person. I'm a real team player. And um, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, have been very supportive of me and supportive of, of Anglesey. And, and let's be honest, this, uh, this party has an 80 seat majority and, and seats like Chichester are important, but it, it's these the seats like Honest Morn that mean that we actually have this majority and you really really feel that within Westminster I really feel that I've had the support um, of, uh, of of the Prime Minister and his team I mean he came to the island at the beginning of this year he's been very very supportive of Wilver he said it's the best uh, best uh, new